So maybe a first question would be, give us a state of just your tribe. Madison has just been designated in December, Truax Field, as the home of F-35A. Doctor, can you start? Give us an overview. The Wisconsin Republican Party has a new chairman, Andrew Hitt, and congratulations, recent chose, recently chosen by executive committee. Thank you, Steve. And thanks for coming to Wisconsin I to talk about you and the party and your goals. Happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, I'm fascinated by the bio on your website. You're, you're an attorney with Michael Best and Friedrich, right? Correct. Yeah. The bio says, uh, before law school, you were a cancer researcher for McArdle Lab and the NIH. Is there more societal good in being a cancer researcher than an attorney, Andrew? <laughs> How, uh, t what a unique evolution. Talk about that. True. Um, and my wife's actually a physician. She I is. I met her at UW-Madison okay. um, in patho Pathogenic Microorganisms Lab. Okay. So we met over the glow of the Bunsen her. burner. <laughs> over a Bunsen burner? <laughs> Sat by each other. Um, and, you know, I, I get a big kick out of her uh, physician friends when I said uh, I left the profession of cancer research to the noble profession of law. Okay. Usually gets a big joke out of them. And not the Shakespeare quote. Remember it, that first? But never, okay, right. we'll, we'll move on. <laughs> um, seriously, you, you thought of getting into politics with the goal of getting, uh, sorry, getting into law with the goal of getting into politics? So um, I was in college um, during 9-11 um, and you know like a lot of people that day had a, a huge impact on folks. Mm -hmm. um, for me I kind of th said um, you know I, I wanted to find something where I could impact my community and give back every day Obviously, cancer research is an amazing job, amazing, noble profession. But you know, I thought about where could I impact and, and what could I do? And being an attorney, oftentimes communities turn to attorneys for board positions to help the community, serve the community. Um, and so that's, that's really why I made the change. It was a pretty dramatic change, um, but one that's really worked out well for me. And you're a graduate Richland Center class of 96? That's right. You want to do the fight song or anything? <laughs> no, that's okay. okay. Uh, I could do it with Ann Walsh Bradley. Uh, <laughs> Justice Bradley oh, really? graduated from Richland Center. My dad taught her in high school. <laughs> oh so. my, so your dad was a teacher then? He was. Okay. So um, you go to law school, mm -hmm. and then what was the nexus that brought you into politics? Uh, you were you clerked for Justice Ziegler. That's right. And then you were deputy legal counsel for Governor Walker. Correct. Served in other positions in the Walker administration. Yes. Um, why did you get into politics? Yeah. So when when um, when Governor Walker was elected, uh, obviously the transition team turned to people to ask who should be in the uh, legal counsel's office. Mm -hmm. um, my name came up, having clerked for Justice Sigler. So interviewed for the office of legal counsel. Was fortunate enough to get the deputy legal counsel position. Uh, Justice Elect Hagedorn uh, got the chief counsel position. He and I are good friends. We clerked together uh, on the Wisconsin Supreme Court. In fact, he even uh, he started mid term and when he started he actually lived with my wife and I uh, for four or five months before he moved his family over. Oh really? So yeah. So um, you two are very very close. Good friends. Right. Yep. Um, Brad Courtney is the former chairman. He chose to step down after eight years. Yep. Uh, you raised your hand. Why to be chair? Um, it's a you know I look at this time period and I think it's a, a an interesting time and a great time to be chair. Um, there when you have a governor um, you, you know, the party uh, has a certain role. Um, right now, with, with not having a governor, um, the party has an opportunity to kind of look at itself, reformulate it, build itself, and that's exciting. Um, and or, you know, being chair at this time, at this time period, is just a really exciting time to do it. Um, I can't say that I planned it forever um, mm -hmm. or anything like that. Um, I started out as treasurer of the party a few years back, uh, became first vice chairman. I ran for that in December of last year, became first vice chairman. And then uh, Brad started to make clear that he was, you know, just going to be around for a few months. And then as he stepped down, I became acting chairman uh, and then really decided Decided, you know, I think this is something I'd like to do. I think I can do uh, a really good job at it. And I had just a lot of support from not only elected officials, but more importantly, the executive committee. Mm. Well, politics both in Washington and Madison is kind of a cauldron right now. So what are your goals as chair for the next two years? Sure. Um, 
So I, I would classify them in short term and long term. Short term, obviously do whatever I can to make sure that the legislature stays Republican in 2020, um, get the president reelected in Wisconsin. Um, and then long term though, is really focusing sort of on the long game of the party, mm -hmm. Re building up the local membership, building up the local parties, um, focusing not only on um, the local parties, but also local office, making sure that we're recruiting our people, conservatives, into the school board, the city council, the county board, uh -huh. and building up the farm team. Because, you know, um, Speaker Fitzgerald, or Speaker Voss and Majority Leader Fitzgerald, they do an amazing job finding people to run for the assembly and run for the Senate. I think if I can focus on you know those local races and helping build up that farm team so they have a pool to pick from, and then growing the team um, over time is just really important to building the party. So long term, building the party; short term, those two elections, and also um, ensuring that the Supreme Court stays conservative. Why did Mr. Trump win in uh, 2018, and why do you think he's going to carry Wisconsin in 2020? I think he definitely will carry Wisconsin in 2020 by a bigger margin than this less than one percent. Oh, I, I don't. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to go there. Yeah, right. um, but I think he's going to carry uh, Wisconsin in 2020. Um, I, I think the the story that really hasn't been written, except I saw an article in the New York Post about the about the Hagedorn race. Mm -hmm. Really, the untold story there is the effect that President Trump had on that race. You know, the RSLC ran an ad uh, late that talked about um, you know. Comparing, uh, you know, what happened in the in the United States Supreme Court versus, you know, what was going on in the Wisconsin Supreme Court race. Yes. I think that really motivated people. I think as you look at the map and you saw how how many people came out to vote for Justice uh, Justice Luck Hagedorn um, in the northern part of the state and also down the, in the Fox Valley and then down the you know the, the Lake Michigan corridor all the way down to Racine and Kenosha. Um, I think that's a recipe for success for him. Um, we need to replicate that, but we also need to focus on Dane County and Milwaukee County. We, there's a lot of Republican votes there, and we can't just give up um, you know, and say, oh, th those are counties that th the Democrats win. There's a lot of Republican votes there. We need to focus in Dane and Milwaukee, get those votes, and then you know, we saw you know, how, how we can turn out our voters in that Hagedorn race. The, um, the Hagedorn campaign ads that featured President Trump, were, were they just targeted in the Fox Valley Green Bay? Mm. Uh, great Do question. Think? I don't know th that for sure. I think they were targeted more in northern Wisconsin and in the valley, but I don't know um, for sure in terms of where they played in Dane County and Milwaukee County markets. Um, I interviewed three political science professors this morning on the Governor Evers' first 100 days, and one of them said that he thought the attacks on uh, the ju justice-elect Hagedorn's faith really were significant in terms that people resented it. What role do you think the negative attack ads on his comments when he was a law school student played? Yeah, um, you know, honestly, I think it was classic Democrat overreach. Um, it absolutely energized the Republican base. Um, it didn't. It, it, it didn't just energize the Republican base or our traditional grassroots. More and more people, new people, were coming out and saying, I want to get involved in this race. I want a yard sign. I want to make calls. I want to go knock on doors because they were so offended by it. I think absolutely Wisconsin, it, it's a purple state, but it's a traditional state. Those kind of messages, they don't work here. Well, okay, let's, let's talk about the purple state. President Trump carries it in 2016. <coughs> Justice Dallet and Tony Evers win in 2018, and uh, Mr. Hagedorn wins in 2019. So we, we have this whipsaw. I mean, you can get right. whiplash in Wisconsin. So yep. we're, we're truly a, a purple state. That's right. Um, why? I think the You have Senator Johnson, Senator Baldwin, right. at both ends of the political continuum. Excuse me, I didn't give you a chance to answer. Yeah, no. Um, I think you're absolutely right. It's a purple state. Um, you know, uh, President Obama and Governor Walker weren't on the ballot at the same time, but it's pretty clear that there were Walker-Obama voters in Wisconsin. Um, I think, you know, Wisconsin is an independent uh, thinking state, um, and I think that people you know, people look at who they want to vote for and they look at some of the positives and they say, you know what, I like what he or she has done. And, you know, I sort of wonder if, if Wisconsinites, sometimes they don't focus as much on the negative. You know, oh, I don't like what he or she did, so I'm not going to vote for him. It's more, I like what 
that person did. I'm going to vote for him. I'm going to overlook the thing I don't agree with. And I think that's part of why we see this kind of back and forth that goes on. Um, it just means that the ground game, the candidates, uh, the air, the, the, the ads are all, you got to bring it all together in order to be successful in, here in Wisconsin. With the farm economy in Wisconsin truly hurting, and some industries, I had uh, interviewed Congressman Style this morning, he said, yes, some industries are getting hurt by the tariffs. What winning themes will the president have in 2020, Andrew? Um, well, I think absolutely uh, the court, the Supreme Court is going to be a winning theme again, promoting democracy and freedom around the world. A strong America um, will be a winning theme. People mm -hmm. care about that. They don't, they don't want to see um, America weak. Um, and I think that's going to be a motivating theme throughout. I think um, economic uh, prosperity will also be. We see the stock market doing amazing right now. I think those are going to be some of the themes that we see, and I think it's going to be a recipe for success. Do you think former Massachusetts Governor Weld should not challenge the president? No, I don't think he should challenge the president. Why? Uh, we, the president has done a, an amazing job. Um, he's done um, so many good things. Uh, I completely support the president. I think um, our executive committee, our, our party in Wisconsin supports the president. Um, and and, and that's, where, that's where I think we should be. What's the symbolism in the president's decision to come to Green Bay Saturday and not go to the White House Correspondents' Dinner? <laughs> well, uh, I don't think he's gone yet. You are, you are right. Right. You're correct. Um, I think it's it's wonderful uh, that he's coming uh, to Green Bay. I live in Appleton, uh, so I'm even more excited that he's coming to my congressional district. Um, it, I, I will tell you that it is it is something to have the president of the United States come to your district two weeks after you've been elected chairman. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting that, but I'm thrilled to. Have have them and you know I'll be there and uh, cheering them on. Well, um, what themes do you expect him to hit in Green Bay? Because uh, we're 16 months out from the presidential election. Mm -hmm. So just uh, some of the themes that you ta talked about? Yeah, I, I would expect to see the same themes. Um, obviously, immigration is going to come up. Um, you know, you're going to see that. I think you're going to see, um, you know, American, um, American freedom promoting democracy. I think you're going to see a strong America portrayed um, in his speech. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think there's going to be any breaking new ground. Uh, but it's really about coming to Wisconsin and getting our grassroots energized and, and geared up for the 2020 race. We cannot wait uh, until January of 2020. We've got to start working now. The president knows that. There's a reason he's coming to Green Bay. Um, we're, we're glad he is. It's, you know, it's interesting and wonderful to see that the Democrats uh, have found Wisconsin this cycle. Um, so we're happy to have them. Welcome. Um, so I think, I think those will be the themes. Okay, I have a confession. I started to read the 438-page Mueller report and didn't get, get very far. Now, you've probably read the summary. I, I've looked at it, yes. You, lo lo looked at the summary. Mm -hmm. uh, your reaction to the Mueller report? So, um, you know, and I think this came out right before the report, but when I saw that there were 2,800 subpoenas, 500 search warrants, and 500 interviews, I'm a former prosecutor. I uh, was a felony gun and drug prosecutor in Milwaukee before um, or after I clerked for Justice Ziegler. Mm -hmm. um, I was shocked at how many search warrants were executed in, 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 this, in, this, in this case. That's a lot of intrusion on Americans. Um, I, I just I can't believe that there was that much government intrusion. Um, and you know, I think a lot of people, and, and I think you've kind of seen a little bit of a bounce um, since the Mueller report. Um, and, you know, I'm not surprised, really. I think people are looking at this and saying, wow, you know, they, they, they looked under the hood that much, and there wasn't anything, un anything there. Um, and I think that's a big takeaway. And for me, that was, that was just shocking to me. Congressional Democrats, of course, want to hear from uh, Mr. Mueller mm -hmm. and former White House counsel Don McCann. Um, are they uh, overreaching in that, or t should those two former high officials come and tell Congress their personal knowledge of the uh, Trump White House? Yeah, I, I don't know a lot about the issue. I know I've seen some reports about here are the list of uh, former White House officials uh, that have gone and testified. Here are the ones that have not. Um, you know, I think executive privilege is very important. 
Um, I don't know that I have a lot to say on that. Um, I, you know, if I were uh, in the mix in advising, I w wouldn't advise again. I wouldn't advise to have uh, you know anybody go and testify before Congress. What about those uh, even White House aides on the issue of security clearances? Because that's that's a new issue. Yeah, I am. Um, you know, I don't know much about it, um, and I, I got to say, you know, federal executive privilege isn't something that I've studied. Um, so I don't know that I would have a strong strong counsel on it. Your reaction to the most liberal Democrats who say, let's, let's in the U.S. House begin impeachment proceedings, sir? Yeah, um, you know, I don't, I don't think we're going to see that. I think um, Speaker Pelosi's made that pretty clear. Um, you know, I mentioned, you know, kind of classic Democrat overreach before. Um, I think it would be pretty much classic Democrat overreach if they were to do that. Uh, don't see it happening. I think th to the extent they want to talk about it, I don't know that it's necessarily a bad thing for Republicans. What's your elevator speech when the question is, what's the difference between the Democrat and Republican Party nationally? Um, elevator speech, y you know, I, I look at where the Democrats, what the Democrats are talking about right now and where they're going. And I just feel like they've veered so far to the left. And I'm sure you can say, you know, people are gonna say the same thing about Republicans. But to me, where the Democrats have taken things, or at least some Democrats have taken things, is so far out of the mainstream. Um, some of the things that, um, um, you know, Cortez is talking about um, are just so far um, out of where I think, um, you know, everyday Americans are at. And so, you know, I think we've got um, a great message, economic prosperity, um, limited government, fiscal restraint, um, uh, promoting freedom and democracy around the world. I think those are the things that speak to people. That's what I believe in. That's what Republicans believe in. And, you know, I think some of these things where, that they're talking about um, are just so far to the left that it's, it's you know, really uh, unmotivating to most Americans. Uh, Bernie, Bernie Sanders, of course, won the uh, 2018 Wisconsin Democratic primary. Uh, former Vice President Biden is scheduled to announce tomorrow. Um, who do you think would pose the biggest, uh, the most serious challenge to President Trump, both in Wisconsin and nationally? Which Democrat? You know, I don't know if I have an answer to which specific Democrat um, would pose the biggest uh, challenge to the president. Uh, I think they all have their issues. They all seem to be a little bit on a, an apology tour. Um, uh, and I don't, I don't see any of them as being strong candidates uh, to go against the president. I think the president's going to be very strong. I think he can motivate people that we haven't seen in a long, long time. I expect that he will do that again. Um, and I don't think any of them right now, I don't look at them and say, oh, geez, I hope it's not that person. Mm -hmm. um, what about the president's style? Do you wish he would tweet less? Um, a very unique way of being president, <laughs> Andrew. Yeah, right. You know, we, we're in a different time. You know, we used to communicate with press releases mm -hmm. um, and, you know, a, an interview here or there. And we're really seeing a time period where um, th how, how we communicate and how elected officials communicate is just so different anymore. Uh, and we see so much of it communicated through social media and Twitter. Right. The, the role of social media, generally good and positive for uh, the discourse of politics in our nation or a, a, a negative factor? Um, I think that um, it, it allows people to speak directly to the electorate. That's a positive thing. I think as campaigns, as political people, we might get a little too caught up in Twitter and what we put on Facebook. Um, I think that not everybody spends every waking minute, you know, refreshing their Twitter feed. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know that I would say in campaigns that I think it's all good. Uh, I think we need to focus on the people aspect of it, the knocking on doors, the making phone calls, kind of that, you know, grassroots organizing and getting out there and talking to the people and saying, hey, here's what we believe in. You know, we're, we're voting for President Trump or we're voting, you know, for um, Speaker Voss um, and really getting out there and explaining to people uh, why, you know, why we've got the right message. The summary that you read of the Mueller report, which puts you ahead of me, I haven't finished the summary. I, I think I read most of it. Understand. Um, how concerned are you about the efforts made by uh, Russians 
uh, in the social media. Do you think they had a very dramatic and significant effect on the turnout in 2018, or has that been overstated? I, first of all, very concerning that they would do that. Um, you know, uh, very, very concerning, very troubling. The impact, um, I think, is really hard to assess. There's so much information out there. There's so much um, uh, information. There's so many avenues for information out there. Um, you know, could it have had an impact? You know, I suppose sure, um, but I don't know that it had such a dramatic impact. Um, there's probably a lot of people who understand, you know, data and how this stuff works that can answer it better. Um, at the end of the day, I think we've just we've got to concentrate in getting our message to the American people, um, to the people of Wisconsin. Uh, it's a winning message, it's a motivating message, and it's a positive message. You sound like you're concerned about potential Russian hacking in the 2020 elections. Are you? Uh, I no, I don't think so. Um, we we have um, a really good system, uh, and you know, I I was um, counsel f uh, to the president in the recount in Wisconsin in 2016, mm -hmm. um, and so uh, you know, those are some of the things that we dealt with in that recount, or at least thought about it. I think our system is very secure uh, here in Wisconsin. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it would be troubling if they tried. Uh, I don't worry that it's going to impact or, or interfere with our election. What did you learn about uh, politics from uh, working with and for Governor Walker? Um, great question. Um, you know, Governor Governor Walker was um, uh, was just a, such a regular guy who could sit down and talk to anybody, and he was such a caring guy. Um, when I worked for him, uh, uh, three big things happened in my life. Uh, my dad passed away. My uh, son was born with chronic kidney disease, and my mom passed away. Wow. Um, so you know, I I got to know you him through three major issues. Right. Um, and you know, each. Is your son okay? Uh, yeah, he's doing great. Okay, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for asking. He's doing wonderful. Um, but you know, he, he, nobody, you know, nobody knew that he, you know, called me on each of those and followed up with me. Um, I learned that no matter how busy you are, no matter how important you think you are or feel you are, you always have time to take care of people. And that's what he did an amazing job at. And he should run for what next time? <laughs> uh, he, you know, that is, that is obviously up to him. He did an amazing job being governor uh, for eight years. Uh, what his future holds, I don't know. Uh, he's pretty busy right now, I think. Um, and, but, you know, at the end of the day, I'm just grateful for all the, the wonderful policies that he, that he helped uh, bring to Wisconsin in, in those eight years. Is your party unified? And the reason I uh, ask is this uh, disagreement over in the 5th Congressional District where uh, Governor Walker has been disinvited. Sure. Mr. Sensenbrenner was upset. Some comments when Governor Walker was filling in a radio talk show. Is your party unified beyond mm -hmm. the fifth? Well, uh, it, first in the fifth district and then statewide. Yeah, I think it is unified. Um, I'm a big believer in the eleventh commandment. Um, Speak no evil. That's right. <laughs> um, big believer in that. Uh, but I, I think it's unified. You know, individual people are going to have disagreements. That's normal. Um, not really much to it. You think about what we went through as a party, losing the governor's office, losing the attorney general. We could have had a very, very tumultuous time in our party, uh, but we didn't. Uh, we all came together. Uh, Senator Johnson has stepped up uh, and has really um, risen to the occasion and become involved in the party. His steady hand and steady leadership has been um, wonderful. I'm very, very grateful for it. Um, so I think we, we just faced an unbelievable test uh, in when we could have had a tumultuous time, and we didn't. Why did uh, Democrat Mr. Evers beat uh, uh, how did Governor Walker lose to Mr. Evers? Yeah, great question. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things that can impact an election. 
um, as we have taken a look at maybe how we could have done better or how we could have improved things, I think the biggest thing that I see really is you can have all the money in the world, you can have the best data in the world, you can have all the technology and techniques, you can use all of that to target the exact person that you want to target. Um, but that doesn't mean that they're going to open up that Facebook ad. It doesn't mean that they're going to pay attention to that TV ad. It doesn't even mean they're going to read that mail piece. You can do all of those things. But if people are a little unsatisfied, a little unhappy, um, if the political cl climate is a little bit negative, that's where you need kind of a grassroots army, a grassroots infrastructure, you know, going out, knocking on doors, uh, making phone calls, talking to community members, family members, friends, people they don't know in their community, church members, having that personal touch to say, hey, I support Governor Walker or I support candidate, you know, candidate so and so and mm -hmm. here's why. Mm -hmm. I think that we could have done a better job at that, at engaging the grassroots. Um, I think, you know, there probably was some complacency out there. Um, he, you know, Governor Walker has won three times, he's not going to lose. Um, so we have an amazing data program at RPW. We always, ha you know, we have, we've had for a long time. It's one of the best in the countries. Um, but we need, we need that soft side too. And that's what my goal is, is to balance that out. Keep the amazing data program, keep the really good voter file, but also build up this grassroots infrastructure so that we can, we can have that personal touch. And but I think that could have made up the 30,000 some votes. The Charles, Charles Franklin poll said that some Republicans resented the governor's 2015 run for president. Had he not run for president, would he be governor today? No, it's it's so hard to tell. I think um, there are certainly people who who didn't want to see him run for for president. They mm -hmm. they loved him as governor. They wanted to keep him as governor. Um, so I, I think that could have been a factor. I think there's a lot of factors in elections. Um, I, you know, was that thirty thousand votes? Geez, you know, there's no way to tell. Very high turnout in Milwaukee and Dane County. But okay, um, what polit uh, new subject, what political openings has Governor Evers given your party and Governor uh, Evers' first four months in office? Um, I, you know, I, I personally think uh, the lame duck lawsuits um, has presented us with an opening. I think the, 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 the decision on the appointments um, really has given us an opening. Uh, you know, there's no doubt in my mind, no question that the extraordinary session was completely constitutional. I think the Supreme Court of Wisconsin is going to overturn that, overturn those rulings. We're going to go back. Uh, That's I a very important precedent. We have had extraordinary sessions since 1981. Right. Hundreds of bills, budgets, redistricting, uh, labor contracts have been confirmed, right. and uh, there's just been some very important action taken in, in extraordinary. And you, you're right. confident that those will be upheld? Yes. Uh, and I think they have to be. I mean, the separation of powers is so critical. Um, and that's really what this is going to be. It's a separation of powers issue. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think that the, the move on the appointments and, and rescinding the appointments, I think it's been a huge distraction. I think that that's given us an opportunity uh, that, um, you know, Speaker, Speaker Voss and Senate Majority Leader Fitzgerald have really uh, taken and run with. Um, and, you know, I, you know, I I think that's been um, maybe a little bit of an overreach on, on the Evers administration. Okay, two final questions are almost out of time. You have expertise, uh, you've worked on health care issues. Mm -hmm, yep. w what's wrong with the Democrats who want Medicare for all? You know, uh, Medicare, um, Medicare works and, 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 you know, works for the population that it serves right now. That doesn't mean that it's going to work if you, uh, ex you know, I explode it into the entire population, into the entire country. Um, I I'm not a believer that government is the solution, um, so I, I would hate to see um, a, you know one payer system, uh, Medicare for all. I think that the, we need to do more uh, about incentivizing the right behavior in healthcare and using innovation. I think those two are the key to making healthcare better in the future. I don't think government is the key to making healthcare better. Okay, final question. You're uh, in your early 40s. Yeah, 41. Okay. Um, why why should uh, a millennial or someone in their 30s and 40s uh, be a member of the Republican Party of Wisconsin? What does your party have to offer that the emerging generations? Sure. Um, I, you know, I think economic prosperity. I think um, the, the party that um, 
believes in um, believes in a strong America. I think um, we're a, we're a party that has you know a lot of mainstream views, um, and the party uh, of the Democrats right now is moving so far to the left that I don't think that's appealing for the long term. I certainly don't want my kids um, growing up in a socialist society, um, and there's so much talk about that right now. So I think I think we have a wonderful party. I, uh, um, I think we got a lot of young people who are coming in, a lot of young leaders who are growing up right now uh, and coming into the party. And I think it's a it's a wonderful time to be a Republican. So who's going to keynote your convention May 7, 17, 18? Uh, we, you know, we've got uh, a bunch of people that are coming. Uh, the delegation is going to be there. Senator Ron Johnson is going to be there. Um, so um, it's the theme of the convention this year is uh, a, a new day, a new party. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be talking about how we're going forward. Forward. Um, so a lot of different people are going to be involved and up on stage and speaking. Um, I'll get a chance to introduce myself to folks. Um, so I think it's going to be you know a wonderful convention. Wisconsin State Party Chairman and Andrew Hitt. Thank thanks, you. Thanks for talking to Wisconsin Eye. You bet. Thank See you. See you at the convention. Sounds good. Thank you.